Hi there, what's up guys? Um, so I just want to show you my error. So as you can see, I've got the DRAM LED error over there. And you can see I've got one RAM slot and the closest one to the CPU. So what I'm going to do is power this off. Um, I've already clicked that Memo OK button and it doesn't do anything. Um, what I've done is um, I have changed the processor that I've got. Um, I had my processor, my i7 3770K had the same problem. I thought it was the processor at first. However, after changing the processor and buying a brand new i3-3225 for my mum's rig that I'm building up over here, um, I put it into my system and what do you know, the RAM fails straight away. I can confirm the RAM runs perfectly fine um, on my mum's rig. And so what I'm gonna do is prove this to you. So the first two slots do not boot. As you can see there, only one RAM slot in there. I don't need to put a second one because it's just even more more problems. But as you can see, the RAM LED stays on. So I gave I gave it quite a lot of time. I've done a lot of testing on this. Um, I've checked all the CPU um, pin uh, CPU pins on the Asus Sabertooth. Um, I don't know what is causing this, but now I'm going to shift over my RAM to the two furthest away slots from my. CPU. So I put that in and I put in another one just to show you that the two furthest away ones work perfectly fine. So let's do that. Let's try and get it in. Obviously it's a little bit hard when you're doing this with one hand but uh, there we go. Wait for the click. Perfect. So I'm going to hit the power switch Watch that DRAM LED, bam, it's gone straight away. So I'm going up to the PC to show you, to show you the boot. So it's gonna do its uh, usual boot sequence and everything. So as you can see, now it posts, um, and obviously still no problems with no LED problems over there. As I said, it's the i3-225 in there. Um, and I've tried it with the i7 as well. What I'm going to demonstrate is the fact that the RAM works perfectly fine with my old configuration. My PC is an i7 and my mum's PC is an i3. So I just got the i3 in for her, but at the same time I can do some cross-testing with my PC because they're both, um, the sockets are 1155, the same sockets. So they share the same socket. So what I've determined is that out of this rig, um, my Sabertooth Z77 is faulty. Um, <laughs> this is ironic, but two years ago I had almost the exact same problem. I don't know why, but with my Asus P5K Premium. Anyway, long story short. Just want to show you, as you can see, my PC is booted. I can go and open up Core Temp, can open up CPU Z. As you can see, it's the i i3 which is running there, 3225. As you can see. Right, so enough of that. Shut down. And what I'm going to do now is take my two RAM slots and put them on my i7. Now initially I thought my i7 was the problem. Um, and I repeat, I've got my i3, my mum's i3 in my rig, and I've got my i7 in her rig. So I can, you know, I'm trying to check if it's RAM, is it CPU, is it board. Basically I've determined that it's the board. So the easiest way to do this, to demonstrate this to you, is to get out the RAM. There we go. So that's out of her rig. I just have to get a USB for the keyboard. Put it at the back of that PC. I'm gonna flip this over. There we go. So as you can see, i3, it's got an i7 in here. This is an i7 PC. So as you can see, I've got two RAM slots at the moment right there, but I'm gonna add another two simply because, well, it can take it, um, but uh, also just to prove that my i7 actually can run on um, dual channel configuration, just to eliminate any problems that could relate to the IMC, uh, which the IMC is the um, internal memory controller, which is located on the right side of a CPU chip. So, well, at least the one I have. Right, so as you can see, it's plugged in, it's powered on and everything, and now, just have to flip it because the power switch is on the side. Right, so as you can see, it's going to boot. Just to show you, the PC, four slots in, 
Intel thing right there, little beeping sound. Right, so as you can see the PC is running, and there you can see uh, my mum's PC is booting up. And this is a, my my mum's build is a brand new build. As you can see, I still have the Intel i3 thing right there, which is going to be replaced by the Arctic Pro Cooler 7. So as you can see, I've got boot. So I've got my i7 running 16 gigabytes of RAM on a gigabyte motherboard, which my gigabyte motherboard, by the way, is about 80 quid. Sabertooth one's about 170. Obviously. Knowing Asus, it's going to fail, isn't it? So, um, just to prove to you that I'm on my i7, I'm not lying and everything. So, I'm going to open CPU Z and Core Temp again, exactly as I did on my PC. Just to show you. So, here you go. You can see my i7 3770K running at stock, 3.5 gigahertz. Um, as you can see, Turbo Boost is enabled, so Turbo will take it up to 3.9. Um, on boot, usually it stays up at 3.9, and then within a minute or two, as I've got the um, usually the ba balanced power options, it'll drop down to 1.6 gigahertz. So as you can see over here, 3.9, 377. Okay, um, and obviously yes, the RAM would wouldn't be a bad idea to show you. Let's try and get that with one hand. That wasn't bad. Just to show you, I've got 16 gigs. Of RAM right there, total RAM is 16.2 gigabytes of RAM. So, out of all of this, I've done a lot of testing and I can safely assume that it's my motherboard. I have no idea why, quite, quite honestly. I have checked the CPU pins just to check in case I had done something, but nope, that they're all fine, they're all working perfectly fine. Uh, people on the internet say it's something to do with the BIOS. Um, as in not a flashing a BIOS but literally wiping the BIOS chip and reflashing a BIOS chip but I just wanted to demonstrate this is a 1300 pound rig basically uh, obviously my i7 and with the i3 inside there this is about a 450 pound rig and that's including monitors by the way if I take the monitors out take 120 off both of the prices that I just said just want to let you know the price difference between the two obviously this is going to outperform it by a long shot, but it's just typical, typical Asus to have something failing on me, whereas I had the same, exact same issue two years ago, and Asus were utterly useless in trying to resolve my issue. So now, hopefully I'm gonna RMA this via scan, because scan honor the warranty. I made sure about that before purchasing my Asus through them, because I had a terrible experience with Asus in previously. I actually regret buying the Sabertooth Z77, simply because I had a poor experience with Asus. But uh, their hardware is good, I've got to say, but their software is utterly terrible. So I don't know what's happened with the hardware now, so I have to obviously dismantle all my PC, send it all for RMA and whatnot. So it's going to be a real pain to send this all back because it's obviously quite a lot of stuff. Um, but it has to be done, it has to be changed, something has to be done. I do not really want to flash a BIOS chip simply because if I fail and something happens, obviously that's my fault and something's happened in that respect. In this case, it's just the board just decides, you know what, screw you, uh, we're just, I'm just going to stop working, I'm just, you know, two of my dim slots are just going to go, you know what, I don't feel like working anymore. So, there you go. Right, so, just thought to show you this video and share um, with you. Right, hope you enjoyed this video guys, take care, bye bye.